Welcome back everyone. This is DIY Hemi with another tech tip. So today what we're going to cover is priming the oil system on the Gen 3 Hemi. And this is going to be the same regardless of what style engine you have in the Gen 3 series. Now the reason you would want to do something like this really is um, it's really focused on the whole swap movement in itself. When you place this engine in some platforms such as the old A, B, E body, C body cars and you have to do a change to the the oil pan and the oil pickup tube assembly, there's a high likelihood that the oil is, is out of the pickup tube and you've lost your prime. Uh, also, if an engine, a donor engine sits up for a long period of time, sometimes they could sit in the corner of a shop for years, you could lose prime in your oil system when all the oil drains out of the pump assembly down into the, the sump of the oil pan. And you really want to do this in those cases to prevent engine damage. So you don't want to maybe spin a rod bearing or uh, a journal bearing, something like that, on your engine. That could be very costly and it could really set back your project. So this is something that's, I say, is just, it's a great safety factor in your build. Just go ahead and do the prime anyway. Make sure you prime up the entire oil system before you crank it up for the first time. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna show you exactly how to do that in a safe way. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the coil packs off and we're going to get access to the valve train. We want to make sure that we can see oil actually flowing through the system and we'll do that by moving, removing the coil packs and the valve cover. So 10 millimeter heads on these bolts for the coils. We'll go ahead and get them off really quick. Okay, now we can leave these spark plugs in place for the time being. Um, I like to leave them in before pulling the valve cover in this case because sometimes you will get debris and you see these valve covers are not the most cleanest in the world. You'll get debris that will slide down in the spark plug holes and possibly getting to the combustion chamber and we really don't want that to happen. So we'll switch over to an 8 millimeter socket and it likes to jump around like that. And go ahead and pull these valve covers out. Move this guy off if he'll break free. There we are. A little stuck. Okay, now we have access to the valve train, the rockers in the assembly. So as you can see, it is a hemi, <laughs> hemispherical. Um, with this combustion arrangement, you have intake and exhaust and opposition spark plugs in the middle, kind of traditional to the old hemi design. Now this is where we want to look. We're going to be looking because of the oil that passes up into the entire valve train area. You'll get a good visual of it right here. You'll see some of the oil galleys and places where as we're pumping up and priming up the system we'll be able to verify whether or not we've actually done a good job in priming up the engine. So next step is we're going to actually go down here to the bottom of the engine. As you can see it's a good snapshot of the factory 45 degree oil filter adapter which again is great for the hemi swap application using almost every hemi swap then we'll see the two sensors so you'll have oil pressure and oil temperature in this case and there's two bosses right here in the engine block directly above the oil filter in the cars typically the oil filter are thread straight on from the bottom uh, with the 45 degree adapter it moves it out of the way uh, one thing that I do want to talk about with the 45 degree adapter is you can interchange by just simply unthreading. It has an internal key um, in the, the threaded portion in the car so where you could thread the, uh, the center insert for the oil filter. You can unthread it here and replace it, this whole assembly with the 45 degree adapter. So don't cut them off. I've seen some people cut off the threaded boss under here in order to uh, put on the 45 degree oil adapter that's really not necessary and it could jeopardize the seal of your o-rings on this face for the 45 degree oil adapter. Now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the two bosses. This one is routed directly up to the valve train whereas this one is uh, more towards the oil pump. What I like to do is I like to work with both of them. So we can actually go ahead and take a hex key uh, or most people refer to it as an Allen set. This is an 8 millimeter. It's going to fit directly into this 3 8 NPT plug right here. 
So we can actually go in, take it out. It's already loose, so this guy will do. Take the plug out, and this is where it gets fun. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money on this. What you can actually do is go to your local uh, home improvement store and go into the plumbing section where it has brass fittings. What I have here is a barbed fitting. I do believe that's, um, I'm going to say that's half inch uh, barb to a one quarter NPT fitting and then I have it bushed up to the three eighths NPT fitting here. All you have to do is thread this directly into that boss all the way in. Uh, you can use uh, Teflon tape if you wish, get a little bit better seal. I've had good luck without it, uh, but that's completely up to you. Now here's the cheap and fun part. At the same box store, grab yourself a cheap $10 uh, garden sprayer. This is all you need. Fill it with your oil, in this case for the Hemi 5W20, and you can simply plug the end. You'll cut the wand off the end, just snip it off, and you'll press it directly on the barb fitting. And I've been using this one for quite a while, so it's a little bit old. There we go. Just kind of get it on those barbs. All right. We'll make sure this is tight. 19 millimeters, slug it, snug it down. Okay, what we'll do is we'll pump the handle and look for oil to actually come through in the valve assembly. You'll notice this, as I said before, goes straight up to the top of the engine. It'll help out with that. So I'll go ahead and begin the prime. Valve's closed, that would help. Can you feel it getting a little firmer? actually hear it gurgling at the top end of the engine as it's pushing the air through the system. You hear it? Very subtly. Oh yeah. Yeah, I can see some some bubbles seeping yeah, out of right these here. ports. You see underneath the rocker arms here? Yep. That's where I see them. You can see the oil coming through. So we're getting a good prime. We've actually had oil pressed through the entire system. It's going through the top end of the engine just as it should. You'll also see them, you know, lubricate push rods, those things. Here's a really good picture of it, you know, dripping. So now we have the top end of the engine primed, lubricated, and, you know, we're kind of safeguarded at this point from any top end um, issues with a uh, lack of lubrication. Yeah. So all yeah. these areas here. Yeah all underneath the, the rocker assemblies. You'll see the oil come through. Now we're going to switch to the bottom of it. So priming the oil pump is very important. Most people when they do oil primes they'll skip the top port and just go straight to the bottom port to go to the oil pump and rotate the oil pump back feeding this entire system. Kind of do it that way. I say it's only a few extra seconds. Why not go ahead and put a little oil through the top first as well then jump to the bottom and you're a little bit safer to begin with. So let's do that now. Take this off. There we go. That's letting air back in the system, that's okay. It already has lube. That's 
not good. Oh, it's, it's oh, it's clean oil. It looked like water. I was uh, oh. scared for a minute there. It looked like oil. Uh, sorry, it looked like water, but it was just that clear Mobile One synthetic motor oil. It's that did scare me for a minute there. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put the plug back in. take off the bottom. Same thing again. Go ahead and here coming through the top again, it's pushing air. And just take a socket, uh, I think it's either 19 or 20 millimeter. I just grabbed the 13 16 really quickly, just as effective. We'll go ahead and put this on the crank bolt and slowly spin the engine over. And you can actually hear the pressure passing through as you rotate it. Another thing I would do to make things just a little bit easier and take some, some compression off of the rotating assembly so you don't have any load whatsoever is you can go in with your 5 8 socket assembly, take all the, or one spark plug out of each cylinder, Same on the other side, we'll take the complete load off the engine. We don't want any compression. So I'll do that. Check back with us in just a second. Alright, so I went ahead and pulled the plug on the other side, and uh, we're going to kind of complete the same process again. I topped off the oil in the container, make sure we get pressure built up, and start pushing the oil to the oil pump. from the engine this time. I don't hear as much oil in it because of, there we are. There's oil movement. The first time you may get confused between actual, you know, piston movement and compression coming, you know, blowing out of the spark plug holes and oil noise. Uh, the difference is pretty much when you stop rotating the, the crank, if it's still making that noise, it's oil. You can hear, you'll, you'll get an ear for it. You'll hear the difference of maybe air rushing through the system versus the, the piston moving and forcing air out the spark plug hole. Right, I just did it and I saw oil coming out of the rocker's assembly. You can see it's still kind of burbling a little bit. That's good, fresh, clean oil we see right there. Good oil. And that's the high point, the rocker symbols right that's there. The so that's the highest part of the whole engine. So, um, so that's when you know it's full, right? That's when you know that you've really primed the system well. I mean, we did do a little bit before by starting with the top, but as you can see now, we have oil coming again. You just saw a drip go on that, uh, that valve spring right there. So you can tell we do have it successfully primed. Look right here, you see it just had some movement. There's the drips coming. Uh, Make sure that once you get a good prime to bleed the air off, bleed the pressure off so that you don't force air right back in. So we do have the system completely primed and you're now safe to 
put your spark plugs back uh, in, torque to spec, put your valve covers back on, and get everything back together so uh, you can fire it off. That's what it's really all about. We just want to make sure we're really safe. Hemi engines uh, are very good engines. I think uh, it'll last you a long time, but just take all the precautions you can when you're uh, working on your project, especially changing out oil pans and pickup tubes. Please like and subscribe to the DIY